The table element is one of the new elements added to Brizzy in 2020. And the good news is that the table element is a free element for all platforms. So that means it includes Brizzy WordPress plugin as well as Brizzy Cloud. Good news all around. Champagne for everyone. Let's have a look at what you can do with the table element. When this element was still in beta, I was very impressed with it because I thought it was already very well developed. I ran into two snags, but in the final edition of this element, I can say that they've been kinked out. So I'm really impressed with this element. And I think if you have a look and a go at it, you're going to say, hmm, I may just see myself using this element a lot in the future. I've got a new page open here. So I'll go up here to the top where it says add elements. And then we look for table down here click drag. And of course I cannot drop it. I need to bring in a container first, start building your page. Ooh, embarrassing. I say, well, this was actually a good thing. One of the things that you will quickly find that the table element works best in full container width for your monitor. That means like a block. Let me show you. Let's do it again. This time let's not embarrass ourselves. There we go. And just by dragging and dropping it, you're going to be impressed with Wow, this looks good. This looks really good. And then, of course, the next question in your brain will go, mm, well, how does it work? And does it work, you know, fluidly? And is it, uh, you know, the brizzy way, that kind of thing? Answers to that, yes. But let me quickly just go back to that topic of why you should use it in a big display or in a big container. If I bring in, for example, here columns into this block and let's make it three and then bring in the table element, you are going to see that you're going to run into a lot of trouble. So from the get go, I always say to people, you have to develop your website with your page builder in mind, their capabilities and restrictions. And if you are thinking in terms of the table element, then remember rather go for a full width or a full canvas within the block. Let's drop back here to this table and then look at how do you go about working with the table. Now, the Brizzy way means that you don't have to click in this cell and there's a sidebar that opens and you have to go and type it in there. And I can see myself getting utterly frustrated if I have to switch to another page builder because there is no other table out there that can do what Brizzy is doing in terms of page builder world. Let's start here at the top. There are three areas I've identified. This one is up here called head. I like to call it the leader or the title section in Brizzy. It's called a head. Then this area here, this is the sidebar, right? And then this will be your content area. Let's start with the exciting parts. Normally what you will do in other table elements with other page builders is you get the cell here and then you go somewhere in another sidebar and you fill in everything there. And if you want to bring in images, you have to go and create a template and you bring in that. Uh-uh, icona. You don't need that within this table element. Let's click on any of these. And the moment I click here on 12 megapixel dual camera, what do you see? You see a toolbar open. What does this mean? It means that this is a text element. Now think about that quickly. What does that mean? It means that you can drag and drop any element in there. I want to bring a line in there. You see those gray lines up here. If I want to bring a video in there, if I want to bring a map in there, hey, sky's the limit. And that is absolutely marvelous. Marvelous, I say. Really, I, I think I'm being waxing lyrical here, but really, I've worked a lot with tables. I had to do a corporate website a few years ago and they had their financial stats online and I had to create these tables and it was a nightmare. This is a dream come true. So the first thing in the content area is that you're going to be building out your content by bringing in elements and you simply drag and drop them. The next thing is the styling. Now the styling for the content area is done with in the table element settings. And that's going to be up here where you see this little chevron, click on it and our famous little toolbar opens up. Let's click here and we have control over the head, which I told you is this area sidebar, this one here on the left. 
and then how many rows do you want columns and the width let's start here with width and it's currently set to 100 percent and it takes that 100 percent from the container width with which it is in currently it's within a block so it's 100 percent of the block and the block canvas is up here so if i go to the block and settings you will see currently it's set to box if i reduce it here it's going to stay at 100 percent for the table element but it's going to adapt to 100 percent of the container width so if i put it on full it's going to stretch all the way from the viewport on the left to the right put it back on boxed and let's go back to the table and that is what width is all about. So you have control over here for that as well then. The one thing I thought that would be useful here, I, I'm thinking ahead, the fact that I can reduce the width would have been an alignment option. And many of the other elements do have that. So it's interesting this one doesn't have it. But it's, I think, something easily that can be added. I don't know if I'm going to use it yet and whether I'm going to have to put it on the left or the right. But I would say if you need to have control over whether it's left or right, then you just bring in columns like this. And let's delete this one. And then you can just simply drag it like this. Go back to the top one and let's continue with the settings. So that's the width. The header, do you want a header displayed? Yes, no, no. And you just disable it. And the same for the sidebar. At this moment, I also want you to think about the possibilities that this opens up for you. Because what you've got essentially here at this moment is a container, similar to your row element and similar to the columns element. You can add columns, you can add rows, and you have full styling and placement control over that. And I think that's absolutely great. And the one thing that I really like about it is that when I bring in more elements within a cell of this table you're going to have the adjacent cells at the same height the only downside is that i don't have placement control whether this is at the top in the middle or at the bottom again a feature i think that would be really cool to bring in because maybe you want everything aligned to the top at the bottom or in the center like it is by default just going to delete this one Go back to the table and let's activate the head and the sidebar because that's ultimately what we want to work with. The rows then currently set to nine and the rows excludes the head. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine rows. And then the two columns here, of course, excluding the sidebar. How high can we go, Freddy? If we drag the slider, it goes to 10. Hmm, not impressive. If you want more, just simply click in there. You can type it in or use the arrow key. Let me just scroll down so we can see. Use the arrow key on your keyboard and you can add more, more, more. And same for the columns. Let's bring it back down to nine, work with the default. And these are all the settings that control the layout of the table as well as the area here. And when it comes to the color, you're going to manage that with this options toolbar. Let's go to color then. Background, border, and shadow. Over here, you see these two tags, and usually these two tags mean in Brizzy that one is your default view and the other one is your hover view. That thinking you have to change. What Brizzy has done is they've become contextual. That means that based on the function that's over here, this option here may change. So, for example, if you go to some of the others like accordion now and uh, ta uh, not tables, accordion and toggle and switcher, then this one is labeled active, which means the one that is selected, that would be the color. In this case, active is not the correct word. It should be alternate rows. So what we have here, this first one is for the first row and then this one is alternating rows. And the easiest way to get your head around that is to have a look at what happens to the table when I change the colors. Here I've selected this one. So let's change it to this color. And you can see it starts at this row and then alternates. Then if I select this one below it and I choose a different color, you can see how it applies to alternating rows. Therefore, if you want your table one color, you have to go in and change both to the same color like so and it's an extra step but i think the alternating colors are really cool 
and having that function embedded so easily within this display that extra step of making sure that you have two colors the same i think it's worth it so let's put it on alternating colors just to keep it in there and remember how to use it and then you have control over the border and let's set the border here and one thing about the border which had caught me off a few times let's put it here on the dark color and you look at that border and you think wow well, i barely can see that border and then you, over here the size if you go and increase the size and i'm just clicking the arrow on my keyboard and what is going on here and it's at this point that you realize something amiss here with our opacity slider so i'm going to drag a opacity up by default it said way low way low and then i'll reduce it to one much better this is my standard go-to table but i also like a dotted border so you can select it here you cannot really see the difference but the big thing that the dotted border does it just reduces also more or less the opacity because you have black white black white black white so if it evens out it almost looks gray so it's very similar to reducing the opacity you still have control over here and many people miss this little link here when it comes to the border in Brizzy. This link here, if you click on it, it delinks the border. So it will give you top, right, bottom, left. But within this element, this won't really work that well. So I would recommend you leave it linked and then you can set the size and the color to what you want. Shadow, mm, where are you going to use that? That's up to you. I don't see me ever using the shadow for a table unless it's becoming like a container again. Good, so what we've done is we've covered how you set up the header, the sidebar, how many rows and how many columns, how you can change the width and set the color. And then of course, if you go to the settings and you click here on settings, you're gonna get all the more settings that normally come with any element. How do we change these guys up here? And these guys here on the left go to the top and click here and as you click on models you will get your little toolbar appear again let's first look at the colors if I choose the color and let's say we choose this one here you see the row changes and then we can go here if we click on color and this where it says color is actually your text right so maybe that can be changed to text so you have your background and then you have your color now, what is this one? Active. Click on active. And if we click here, it changes this color. I'm not entirely sure yet how to figure this one out. Maybe it's a glitch. Let's click here on save. And I'll just go to publish this page so that we can view it on the front end. And you see, that's a very strange one. I think that is a glitch. And that is something that... I would say you probably don't want, hmm, I get it, mastermind. Let me go and add another column. Yeah, okay. So it does exactly for columns what it also does for the rows. I get it. These are alternating colors. Okay, I thought it was a glitch, but suddenly I got a spark of, well, brilliance, a lookidum intervallum. So I decided to do that and it worked. So what that means is that let's let's think again about this. Okay, so I clicked your background and I chose this one. And then when I clicked on this one, I chose a different color. So if I want the top header the same color, make sure that you select buff. Ah, oh, Eureka. And the world spins normally again. Okay, so that's again if you want alternating colors for it. What is strange though, in my opinion, if it's alternating colors, do I want an alternating color here? Hmm, interesting. Good, so what you do here, even though you've selected this one over here, and as you had gone to the color, it's going to affect the entire row. The color option here is your text, and then you have again control here over border, but you can see as far as I can see, it's the same setting I had applied to the rest. Let's talk about the icon, my friend. Icon, select any icon. And where will this icon go? This icon will go to whatever cell you have selected. So in this case, I selected the models and it's placed to the right of the text. I can put it on the left and I have control over the size and custom sizing. Again, a lot of people forget about the three dots. 
And then when you click on that, you have more control over the sizing of that icon. And the spacing is the space between the text and your icon. And then naturally you have your text control here. What you'll have to do, let's see if I change the text to something like this DTM, DM serif text, it changes all the text in the row. So it will apply to the whole row, which is cool. And then you have also your normal typography settings over here. Then how do I change the text? And that's what we mean by the Brazil way. Double click to select the word and type in, what am I gonna type in here? New order. And then you have here for the rest of these columns, you can simply go ahead and select it, change it. Column one, we are very creative this morning. Column two, it's it. Triple click, column two, and so forth. And then for each of these, as you click on them, you can also go ahead and add an icon to that. So I think now, before I go to the sidebar, you should be able to figure out how we're going to get that also changed in the sidebar. Let me go here to my column. Just want to reduce that again to two columns. Click in the sidebar, same procedure. If you go to color, you have your background and you have your first row and then alternating rows. So we're talking here about the sidebar. If we go then and we choose something, which one did we choose? Okay, this one. And then what I'm going to do is just make it darker. And then if I choose the alternating one, choose the green, and I'm gonna make that one also darker. and changing the text and the icon exactly the same. Did you see how easy that was? I cannot underscore it more how easy that was and how intuitive that was. And that's why I'm really excited about this element because truth be told, a lot of the elements that often roll out in Brizzy, they are developed to about 80% and then here and there, there's something missing like the active or like alternate rows that you would have in this case. But I really feel very happy with what I can see with this one within Brizzy, that you have a lot of control and that you can bring in any element. You can even bring in a table within a table if you're so inclined, but that's gonna be just ridiculous. You see, you can do that. Okay, control Z to undo that. Great, a free element for Brizzy free and Pro for Brizzy Cloud and Brizzy WordPress plugin, something that I'm looking forward to using and that can easily spice up, especially corporate websites with all the data that they have to display, or if you have different services and you want to compare options between each other. Really, really great feature. That's another 2020 edition for Brizzy. Thank you for the watch. See you again in the next video. Remember to stay safe. This is JP signing off.